All right, now we are firing a bullet at a mass on a spring. Uh, physics is great, right? Anyways, uh, the mass is sitting on a frictionless surface. No, doesn't look like it, but sure. We know the K constant of the spring. We know the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block. And we know how far in the spring gets compressed. Okay, the maximum distance the spring is compressed after the, the little bullet hits the block and causes this thing to move back and compress the spring. So we know that distance. So uh, here's my first picture, and I'm gonna need a couple more. But first we should think about this a little bit. There is definitely a collision here, right? Oh, and um, the, the bullet is going to embed itself in the mass, I should mention. So there is definitely a collision going on here between the little mass and the big mass. But then this whole spring compression thing, well, the collision is definitely momentum, right? We always use momentum with collisions. and But then with the spring compressing, well, that's not really a momentum thing, right? Hmm. So in this problem, our goal is to solve for the velocity of the bullet, okay? So since there's definitely a collision, and I am looking for a velocity, um, I'm going to draw my pictures right before and right after the collision. Now really that's only when we can be positive that momentum is conserved, immediately before and immediately after the collisions. So um, this picture is pretty much immediately before the collision, right? Bullets move fast, so it'll be there in no time. Let me draw immediately after the collision now. Okay. So what I've drawn here is the bullet embedded into the mass so the total mass of this thing is, you know, little m plus big M. And now they have, it will have velocity, right? I mean, that makes sense. If you shoot it, it's going to move. I don't know what that velocity is. Um, and notice I haven't drawn the spring compressed yet, right? Because, well, immediately after the collision, the spring won't really have compressed yet. So this is my before and after collision picture. If I knew this V that they were moving together with, then I could use the conservation of momentum to get this initial velocity of the bullet. I don't know this velocity V that they're both moving at, though. So now, let's draw the picture where the spring has been compressed all the way in. I mean, you don't even have to really be sure why you're doing it, but, I mean, you must be going to use that information. So in this picture... Spring is all squished in. Oh, my mass is getting bigger every time, sorry. There's my mass. And so it has been, uh, the spring has been compressed in by delta x, which we know. And I mentioned that we know the k constant. Okay. So now what I have, if I look at these second two pictures, hmm, well, I went from having this velocity on a frictionless surface to compressing in a spring. I think the conservation of energy can actually help me solve this, right? I went from having kinetic energy to having potential elastic energy. So it looks like maybe, since I know this compression distance x, I should be able to find what velocity the masses, the, the masses together started with, v, and then once I know that v, I should be able to find the initial speed of the bullet. So this problem is going to use the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. So let's start <clears throat> with the conservation of energy, how about? So I'm going to call this situation 0, 1, and 2 for the sake of referring to them. So the conservation of energy happens between uh, uh, situation 1 and 2. So I know that initial energy, or in other words, energy at point 1, will be equal to the final n. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I know that the final energy at 2 will be equal to the energy that it had at 1 plus any work done by non-conservative forces. So this is like final and initial for the sake of the energy equation, but I'll call it 2 and 1. Um, there's no friction or wind resistance or anything like that, so there are no non-conservative forces doing work. So I just have this conservation of energy. Um, there's no change in height in this problem, 
right? The, there's no H, really. So the, I'm not going to have any gravitational potential energies. I will have kinetic energy, and I will have potential elastic energy. So kinetic energy at 2 plus potential elastic energy at 2 is equal to kinetic energy at 1 plus potential elastic energy at 1. Okay, so at 1, well, the spring is not been compressed yet, right? This is the picture right after the collision, and the spring has not really compressed at all yet. Remember that kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and potential elastic energy is 1 half kx squared, or delta x, I could say. So in picture 1, I certainly have velocity, but I don't have any spring compression. Or in other words, my delta x is, is 0 so far in picture 1. So if delta x is 0, then elastic potential energy is 0. So no spring energy in picture 1 because, well, the spring hasn't been compressed yet. Uh, there's certainly kinetic energy in picture 1. Now in picture 2, I definitely have spring energy, elastic potential energy, because the spring has been compressed. But once you've compressed all the way in there, this velocity, shall I call it v2, will be equal to zero, right? Once it's compressed all the way, it's probably about to pop back out again, but at that moment, its velocity is zero. So then the kinetic energy uh, in spot two is zero because that velocity is zero. So I'm just left with the, um, f uh, let's see, the elastic potential energy at two, one half k delta x squared, right? It's been compressed in by delta x, will be equal to the kinetic energy at 1, which is 1 half mv squared. That v right there, the velocity that they had together. Oh, I have to be careful though. The mass of this block, of this shape, is actually m plus m. Like that. Okay. So, I know k, I know delta x, I know my m's, I can solve this equation for v, right? I can multiply through by 2 to get rid of those, divide over the m plus m and take the square root, and I get v is equal to the square root of, or I'll put the delta x out in front, So there is my velocity uh, with a little algebra that I hopefully didn't hopefully didn't mess up. So that is the velocity of the two masses moving together. That wasn't the question though. The question was to find the initial velocity of the bullet up here in situation zero. But now that I know the velocity that the final velocity, and I know there was a collision. I should be able to work backwards using the conservation of momentum to find the velocity that the bullet had. Okay, so let's try that out. So this is sort of a semi-answer here, and of course, if we had numbers, we could plug them in and find that v. So now using the conservation of momentum, momentum final, or let's see, momentum at uh, 1 will be whatever equal to momentum at, at 0. So momentum at 0 was, we had the bullet's momentum, which is the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet, plus, well, zero. The big block of mass, capital M, had no velocity at this point. It was just sitting there. Perhaps I didn't mention that, but it was implied, I hope. So the mass is just sitting there, so with no velocity, it has no momentum at position zero. But then, at one, we've got this one block of mass M plus M. That's one way to think about it. We have one object, and its mass is this and its velocity is v. So, well, this one is easy. You just divide over the m, and we get the velocity of the bullet must be equal to that much of v. Since we found v earlier, we can plug that in here, and we'll have the velocity of the bullet. So the final answer, symbolically, would be the velocity of the bullet equal to... that. 
I'm sure this could be rewritten using some exponent rules or something, but something like that. So, uh, this, or something like it, is a device that's actually used to measure how fast bullets go. Uh, another version is a ballistic pendulum, where, where rather than compressing a spring, the bullet shot into a pendulum bob, which swings upward slightly. So that's another good problem. Um, anyways, this is a great way to combine energy and momentum conservation into one problem. Uh, and you just have to kind of be able to think ahead a little bit and realize, oh, if I solve for this, then I'll know that, and if I know that, then I can solve for this, blah, 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 physics. All right.